our July 2022 bill is in for our gas and electricity so it's time to do our solar PV, Tesla Powerwall, wind turbine, eddy, zappy, cars, blah blah blah, blah update. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, John here. Welcome. July update then, July 2022. It's been a bumper month for the roses, sort of paraphrasing Elvis Costello. Here's a few shots of some from our garden. Also, as normal, uh, I've put up on screen our setup, so please have a look at that. Pause the video if you want to have a look in a little bit more detail. Also, down and below in the description, all of the details are there, all the components, etc. Let's start with the wind turbine at Ripple Energy. It's been a few maintenance uh, days during the month of July. It was off for three days while the hydraulic fluid was um, changed. Apparently that's a yearly thing which has to be changed. Uh, so I'm sort of learning uh, about <laughs> ownership of a wind turbine as we go. Generation wasn't brilliant during the month, um, obviously not much wind during the summer um, with the three days off as well, um, had some overall impact. So our total savings or payment for the month of July is £8.46. As you can see they're quite low compared to our last three, four months, £8.64. Um, we'll be coming off our electric bill and you'll see that in a minute. Also during July sorted out our suspension on our Tesla Model 3 as you can hear here. So I sorted that out um, but I won't go into that here so if you want to see that video the link to it in the top right hand corner. So while we're on the car we might as well finish off the cars. This is our Teslafy lifetime map of where we've been. So 22,270 miles when I pulled this beginning of August. Average watt hour of 271 watt hours per mile, 85%, 85.5% efficiency. Average speed, 39 miles per hour. 75 software updates to date over the almost three years that we've had the car actually. So in July we had four updates and you can see the battery range there 295.07 so that's crept up a little bit if you look at the previous ones the lowest on that list 286 so it does move about a bit in terms of charging home charging was um, 105.8 kilowatts it says 31 charges there but we've already discussed that previously that that's the, the eddy stopping and starting as it were so it's not actually 31 Superchargers, we did eight at four different locations. So five at Y Boston, one at Tangersley in Barnsley, one at Woodhull um, on the M1, and one at Grantham on the A1. A total of 248, 51 kilowatt hours added there. Now if we scroll down, again, this is all from Teslafy, a slightly different view of some data. So there's a pie chart showing the split between supercharging and AC charging. And then there's a little heat map which shows where most of the charging happens. The supercharger is shown in red and the AC charging is shown in green, little pin marker. That's about it on there. Is it into the spreadsheet? The Tesla, it's down 1,200 miles during the month. Total miles there, 23,217. Um, charging I've already gone through. So total for charging at home was 68 pence. The Zoe did 525 miles um, and now is on 27,868. No problems with the Zoe. Um, we've already mentioned about the squeak on the Tesla but that was an easy fix. Charging at home as you can see there over on the left hand side 90% of our charging was from solar and grid energy was 24.87 kilowatt hours so very little um, it's a shame we've even done that to be honest but um, there was a need to charge during the day for a, a rather um, urgent visit so 
just had to be done. Let's have a look at the solar PV. So total for the month is 814 units. Just slightly under June, which is actually really good July for us, um, because normally July isn't as good as June. Uh, so that was nice to see. Although last year it was, July was better than June. So swings and roundabouts. So yeah, 814, uh, average daily was 26 units. Here's our charts looking at our start of the solar day. And here you can see we're starting to creep forward. So <laughs> our earlier start was about 5.35, I think, at the beginning of the month. And then we creep to almost 10 to 7 on a really late night, a really late morning. Uh, but you can see the trend line there is slowly creeping up from earlier in the morning start to slightly later in the morning. And conversely, the end of the solar day, which is the top part of the chart, shown in red, is creeping back slowly as well. So beginning of the month, it was 20 past 8 in the evening, where we would end our solar day as now sort of creeping back to 8 o'clock. Depending on the weather, it could even be half seven, five to eight, that kind of time. But again, trend line shows that it's slowly creeping back, as to be expected. But, so yeah, the days are getting shorter. These are our peaks, so peak generation and the time of day of that peak generation. So still a lot of good peak generation during the month of July. Lots of um, generation over six kilowatts, which is good. So anything over six is awesome. Couple of days where it was poor. You see the 21st with just 2,000 units as a peak, two kilowatts, 3.6 on the 12th and 3.3 on the 30th. So yeah, there were a couple of grey days. Let's have a look at the split between the two arrays. So the four kilowatt array at the bottom shows 517 for July and the 2.34 array came in at 297 units. Obviously very similar to June, being that the totals were very similar. So all good there. In terms of self power from the power wall and the solar for the month, we were 94% self power, which I was really pleased with. So it's only 6% pull from the grid over the course of the month. And you'll see what that figure equates to in a minute when we get onto that chart. Power wall in and out, round trip efficiency came in at 86%, with 330 in and 285 out for the month. This is the day by day, the power, the power house usage, power on the brain, house usage in blue there, uh, quite a lot of peaks. Um, as you will see there, when we look at the, the daily average of the house usage, it's quite high, sort of our normal uh, usage, I guess. But most of them are over 20 kilowatts a day. That's typically our usage. And we've got some peaks there running into 40s. Solar generation, by and large, keeps track with that, either matching it or slightly ahead or slightly behind, except for a few days where solar generation was really slow and we've already pointed those out. Input from the grid, which corresponds with low solar. So you can see there's a few days there where we pull the sixth, 10 kilowatts, 22nd, um, sort of 22 kilowatts, um, and so on through. As you'll see, the Towards the end of the month, we were struggling with some grey and dull days, so we tended to use a little bit more grid pull as a result of that. Export, as you can see, very little, a little bit of orange here and there. By and large, what we generated, we used. Let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail here on this chart. The, the, the big numbers, the summary numbers, total numbers for the month. So the house usage is um, 891 units. Solar 814, 100 from the grid in red, and 34 back to the grid in orange. Those that know already, uh, those that don't, we don't have an export tariff, so it's an SEG, Smart Export Guarantee Tariff, so we don't get paid for our export. So I 
keep that as low as possible and we don't have much export anyway what we generate we tend to use so uh, an export guarantee isn't really that much value to us at the moment this is our daily home usage and our daily grid usage so daily house is 29 units that's shown in blue so dropping down slightly but around the 30s uh, which is typically of what we will use nice to see though that the grid usage shown in the red chart is um, the same as last month three units this is what we sent to the grid as you already know 34 units for July but you can see they're comparing it to previous months stroke years so quite low really uh, beating last July import from the grid was a hundred let's look at the bill then our energy account so as I've mentioned previously the data that we just looked at mostly comes from the power wall and my own spreadsheet that I record the figures on and that is the 31 days in July the energy statement just doesn't quite marry up with that so it runs from well, it says on here the 6th of July to the 5th of August but it's actually the um, slightly out it's the 5th of July to the 4th of August so I don't quite know why that is this is our gas so we didn't use any gas between those days we're just paying for the standing charge our gas bill for the month was eight pounds 44 pence that includes VAT and the standing charge electricity usage is shown here on this chart so we used um, let's just go into this we've used a total of 107 units 107.7 units from the grid at a, an average of seven pence per kilowatt hour or seven pence per unit majority of it was on the cheap 5.24 pence per unit almost 88 kilowatts of it and 20 was on the more expensive 4.6 units per 14.6 pence per unit i say more expensive yeah um our tariff ended and we're now on a new tariff uh, so this was oh let's just finish this bit off first before i ramble on to that so this is our gas and electric bill combined so 844 for gas 1567 for electricity again that includes standing charge and vat we have a campaign reward and our ripple saving 864 so our electricity bill is um, sort of about 15 quid for the month which i'm happy with our tariff ended so we're now on a new tariff so this is the gas tariff that we're on so 7.28 pence per unit and 27 pence per standing charge go faster so that's uh, moved up standing charge of 44 for 45 pence almost 44.48 pence per day and i stuck with the go faster rate from 12 30 to 5 30 it comes in at 8.25 pence per unit and the rest of the time it's at 34.43 pence per unit so yeah a lot more expensive but it's still um, good value to be honest because we will again mostly be using the the cheaper five hour rate there I start with a five hour rate because if we run a kill it will generally run through that five hour block so as long as you started at 12 30 it generally finishes about 5 p.m whereas if i went for a shorter period yes the unit rate would be cheaper but we would then bleed into the more expensive rate although it seems more expensive it is actually cheaper because of the of the way we use our um, electricity and then I will leave you with the day by day here. OK, um, so there you go. Any questions, give us a shout. Drop down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. All right, take care. Bye.